If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Nutrition Philly Podcast your host, Brittany Kennedy, on the phillytech.org netcast network. All right, so we are in episode number three. Welcome to the uh, Nutrition Philly podcast. My name is Brittany uh, Kennedy. I'm your host. Uh, Like I said, Episode number three. Uh, last episode, we have a girl, Chelsea, on, uh, who was great, so we loved having her. But today, I have my favorite person on. Woo! Well, one of my favorite people. Yes. So, Stephen is with us today. Say hello, Stephen. Hello, everyone. I am Stephen. What's going on, so, Brittany? Uh, nothing much. I'm glad you could uh, hop in this morning. Oh, uh, too. Are you at work? And we're filming this in the morning, so I don't know what's I going on. I usually never get to work late, and ironically today they scheduled me for 11.30, so I got that time now. Yeah, it was perfect. So um, just so you all know, and I'm going to have Stephen introduce himself, but Stephen was On Point Nutrition's very first client. He was my first client. He was my, my baby, my my first one. <laughs> um and as you can all see, Steven's pretty small now, um, but uh, he was not small to begin with. At all. <laughs> no, it's pretty big. So um, I wanted to have Steven on today because I wanted to obviously share Steven's story with everyone, get his kind of perspective on my counseling and on point nutrition and kind of how his life has literally been changed. Um, but then also to show everyone that Steven's still skinny. So. He didn't like revert back to old Steven and um no. no no no. He's still skinny Steven, which is great. Um but also want to talk about today a little bit um about Steven's struggles still and kind of it, the day to day grind. You know, it's it's not like you lose your weight and everything just magically becomes perfect, right? No. So not, a, not even close. No, it's a day to day thing. Yeah, it's it's hard. So um I'll give you the floor, Stephen. Give us a little bit of intro. Who are you? You know, give us a little bit of your background. How long have you been trying to lose weight? Um, introduce yourself to the world, I should say. All right, sounds good. Well, as Brittany told you, I'm Stephen, and I am. Oh man, I live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I'm originally from New York. I moved here in 2006, and that's when everything kind of started changing for me because in New York, I used to walk miles to school, and I, it took like two hours to get to school, a lot of walking, subways, trains, stair climbing. When I came to Harrisburg and started going to school, I was driving, sitting in class, I worked in an office, and then slowly the pounds started to add on. And I started, I'm studying business administration. I never finished my degree, but I'm going back in January to get my business admin degree. Yay. And thank you. And now I'm here. I've met Brittany like what, almost less than a year ago. And well, almost, almost was, coming up on one year. Which so, yeah, coming on December 28th to be exact. The same yeah. day I met John Cena, but that's neither here nor there. Yes. Side note, <laughs> the day that Stephen and I met, and we actually met in person, which is not common for most of my clients now, we were at a Panera Bread in Hershey, yeah. Pennsylvania, and we ran into John Cena. And Nikki Bella, his girlfriend. They had a show that night at the Giants. Yeah. It was awesome. And yes, they are absolutely huge, and they're jacked. Oh, yeah. and they were getting Panera. It was great. I have my picture with them. Maybe we can show that later. I just I look huge, but in like all the wrong ways. Like not John Cena huge. I was just fat. Yeah. But anyway, back to the story. Back to me. But yeah, now I'm in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, I met my wife here. And she's been with me through the struggle for the last six years because I definitely yo-yoed with my weight. And now, I mean, this is the first time that I was able to actually keep it off after losing some weight. But we'll get into that later and why I'm able to keep it off. Yeah. That's a little bit about me. I'm an avid wrestling fanatic, which is why I mentioned John Cena. 
um, that's it. I mean, not much to, not much about me. Yeah. So Stephen loves wrestling so much that um, when we were working together, I had to plan like SmackDown dinners. Yeah. <laughs> WrestleMania specifically, because whatever it is, and uh, it was it was pretty interesting. He's the first and only client I've ever had to do that for, um, but it was great. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So my question for you, and I want you to kind of to explain how big of a deal this has been for you. Um, give us an idea of how many times have you tried to lose weight? Mm -hmm. What have you tried in the past? Right. Uh, and I would say if you could give me the number one worst diet you ever did. Oh, oh I have multiple ones, but I'll, I'll see which one ranks number one. Um, I've tried to lose weight like five times already, and this has been over the past five years. Like I said, when I moved to Harrisburg mm -hmm. almost eight years ago, those first three years, I mean, I was still relatively active. I was mostly like just partying all the time, so I was still out and about. But... I, would, I mean, I started drinking a lot, started eating a lot, those late night snacks. I mean, and then finally the weight started adding on. Around 2008, 2009, I started to really gain weight. And I finally broke the 180 barrier, which I never was at ever in my life, mm -hmm. ever. Then 190, 200, 210, 220, and then eventually I got up to 240. And it's weird because I don't know if, I mean, until you go through it, you probably are saying to yourself, oh, Stephen, how could you not see yourself getting that big? But I really did not. Even when people told me, hey, you know, you're starting to get a little big, you need to watch it, I, I still didn't see it until one day I feel like I just woke up and I was almost 80 pounds heavier. It was bad. Yeah. So my first attempt to lose weight, I did like a ridiculous no-carb, no sugar, not even carrots or sweet peppers because I thought those sugars were going to affect me. I literally only ate chicken, boiled eggs with like no fat on it, celery, lettuce, and just ridiculous amounts of working out. Like I ran and I lifted constantly. Yeah, and just for everyone who's listening, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. If you don't eat any carbs or sugar and then you go run like an animal, bad things are going to happen. Well, I literally ran to the point where I felt like I was going to faint. And I thought that was a good thing. I mean, I was just oblivious to what I was like, what was good or not. And I found this online. Some lady said it worked for her. And of course it did. You're not freaking eating anything. So. <laughs> of course it worked for me. And I lost a ton of weight. But I looked bad. Like, I just looked malnourished. I lost weight, but I was like skinny fat. Because it was, I still was skinny, but I still had like, like I had like fat. Like, it looked like it was like falling off of me almost. It was nasty. It was bad. Like a melting snow cone. Yeah, it was like melting away in, in, like, in the wrong way. Yeah. So that was one attempt. I lost that weight. I gained all of that back within like three months. Like I couldn't keep that up. I couldn't keep it up at all. Gained it all back. Did that for like another year. Got back up to almost 235, 240 pounds again. That was my cap, 240, size 42 waist. And the second one, well, not the second, this is probably like the third or the fourth. I did that first one like two or three more times because I know mm. it worked. It worked. Yeah. Exactly. So the fourth time, I just cut out all proteins except fish. Oh, yeah. This, is, this one's good. Turkey. So I was eating no chicken, no beef, nothing else, just fish and turkey for eight months. And very, very limited carbs as well. Like no bread, no rice, potatoes. The only carb I had was oatmeal. And just a ton of vegetables on top of that. And then I would work out excessively as well. So I did lose weight with that again. But I couldn't keep up with it. I couldn't maintain that. It wasn't even fun. It was, it was so bad. Yeah. I need all that weight back. Then after that one, and this is probably number one. This is the worst one I ever did. I went on this juicing diet. Juicing started to become a thing, and I guess it still is in some places. And this yeah, I mean, I understand that. I have clients all the time who are like, I'm going to juice and use my Nutribullet and all this. And, it, and it's good, don't get me wrong. Until this day, I juice. But the difference now is the juicing that I do now is just to get extra nutrients. Before, that was my main meal. Yeah. I would juice for breakfast, juice for dinner, have a really light lunch, and no snacks in between. So, of course, I lost weight again. And that one, I didn't work out as much. Yeah. Because I, I couldn't. I didn't even have energy to work out at that point. And I got skinny again. And But, again, it was a bad skinny. I wasn't a fit skinny. 
Yeah. And after that, I started eating again. <laughs> Blew back up another 235, 240 pounds, and that's when I started talking to my wife, and she's like, look, we really need to find a way to do something permanent here because you've been doing this for years now, and clearly it's affecting your health. Because all those times that I got big, the last three months before I met you, Brittany, yeah. I was in the hospital three times for, like, ridiculous things. I was sick constantly. Like, my back, I threw my back out so many times, all that weight I had to carry. Yeah. I had to go to physical therapy. It was bad. I had a lot of issues going on with my body. Yeah. And, and to put this into perspective for anyone who's watching slash listening right now, um, one, how tall are you? I'm 5'7 and a half-ish. Like I'm not that tall. Yeah. I'm so, so, tall I tell people. Steven is 5'7 and a half ish. So 240 for a guy who's 5'7 and a half ish, that's a lot of weight. Because uh, I know someone out there is probably like, oh, 240 is not that bad. He's probably like 6'3. No, no, he's not. Yeah. And two, how old are you? Uh, I'm 27 now. When I started doing that, when I gained my first big weight, you know, I was 22 years old. 22. Yeah. And I gained it that year from all the drinking that I was able to do now. So. Yeah. So this is someone who's not even 30 who's tried to lose weight like five times. You know, and I think the big thing that a lot of people don't realize um, is that weight affects people of all different ages. You know, it's not just, you know, that, you know, postmenopausal woman who gains a couple, gains extra weight. You know, it's, it's, and it's not that person who's just, quote, lazy, who eats whatever they want. You know, this affects everyone. I mean, I said this in my first podcast, I think, with Seth, is that I work with people 16 to, like, 70. You know, so this is an issue that affects a lot of people. And for someone to be not even 30 and deal with all this is a lot. Yeah. And it takes also a very kind of mature and aware person you know, of the age of 26, I guess, when we first met, to kind of step out and be like, I need help. I need someone to help me, and I need to get this under control. Um, because most people in their 20s may not be really thinking that way. Or in my case, a very Jewish mother. Yeah, or in Seth's case, silent Seth over there, a very Jewish mother who <laughs> said he needed to live. <laughs> There's Seth, say hi. So... I think that was the other really interesting thing about Steven is that Steven reached out to me. You know, I did not reach out to Steven. FYI, I don't reach out to anyone, okay? I wait until they come to me because if I reach out to them, they may not be 100% ready to do it. You barely reached back out to me. I emailed you, and it took like three weeks. Like, those three weeks, I was still eating because you were just calling back. Just to let you know. Oh, yeah. Just to let everybody know, I made Steven sweat. Oh. <laughs> I gained like five pounds waiting for your car box. Well, thank you. <laughs> it was hilarious. So, oh wait, hold on. Seth's telling me to put my headphones on. <laughs> hold on, let me put them on. But anyway, yeah, so Steven, I made Steven sweat a little bit because I didn't respond to his email right away. But, right okay, now my headphones are on. Um, so yeah, so Steven, Steven reached out to me and, um, we went back and forth emails a little bit because one, when someone this young reaches out to you, you don't really know if they're a hundred percent committed. You know, and I had met Steven maybe what, like two or three times before? Yeah, you, you met me from here like here up because I refused to get out of my car, but Yeah. So I met Steven like in the car all the time because I am acquaintances with his wife. So I would like randomly see Steven in the car from like here up. Or yeah. or I saw him one time at the gym Mm. Going like an animal with your mom. Yeah, that that was um, that was my that was my fish and turkey days. Yeah, fish and turkey only. I was like, oh, there's Steven again. But it's interesting because this also points out that weight loss is a very personal thing. So this whole time I had seen Steven, I had no idea that he was like struggling with any of this. Um, because one, I only saw him from here up in a car. This part. Yeah, and for the most part. And two, it's not like he was running around proclaiming to the world that I need help with my weight. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's funny because I, when I was that big, mm -hmm. I refused to leave the house. It affected me a lot, like my personal life, because I remember this one situation where Jesse and I, we planned lunch with our friends, and I didn't go because I was so big, I was embarrassed to show up. 
So I made her go by herself, and I feel bad till this day for that. It was like a, uh, they were having a, it was a lunch. We were giving them a baby gift because I missed mm -hmm. the baby shower because I refused to show up to that as well. It was bad, and I just didn't, I didn't go, and I did that multiple times. Like, yeah, it was real bad. So, so there's pre, pre skinny Stephen for everyone. So Stephen and I, fast forward a little bit. Stephen and I started working together in January. This was his. At the and I quote, "New year, new me." Yeah, <laughs> cliche, but hey, it worked for me this year. Yeah, it was it was pretty time. funny. Yeah, so Stephen and I started working together in January, um, and it, it took until about June, I'd say, to get like a hundred percent really where you wanted to be. Um, so very realistic, moderate weight loss, nothing that was too crazy. Um, but I think what I want you to share with everyone is, and I this is a question I'd send him, um, is like key struggles through the process. You know, because Steve, Stephen and I still we met twice a week, um, all over Skype. So we never really we only saw each other twice. Yeah. Once when I first met him, and then at the end we actually went out to dinner uh, with our significant others to an Italian restaurant. At that. Yeah. Uh, I did. And, I had the tuna. I kept the pasta. I kept the tuna from the pasta. Yeah, you did well. So the whole time, Stephen and I are skyping, um, talking about a whole bunch of stuff. So if you could give me like a brief summary of a couple like key struggles. Yeah. Um, through the whole process. Well, every month there was a new struggle. Like yeah. in January, my main struggle was just getting used to the program because, yeah. I mean, the way I do things is always excessive. It's always either I cut everything out or I eat everything in sight. So when you said and used the word balance to me, I'm like, whoa, pump the brakes. I don't know what that is. <laughs> so, that, so it was a struggle to, to try to eat a balanced meal. No matter how dumb that sounds, I couldn't do it. I wasn't used to it. So for that whole first month, I just had to get used to the program that you were putting me on. Um, yeah. Used to the logs. I was never logging my food. How did I have to log my food for, right? Why is that? <laughs> but, I'm um, like, log your food, Steven. I'm um, getting used to the program, I'm logging it, getting used to the routine on a day-to-day -day basis as far as my portions, because that was a big part of portion control, because that was my biggest mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. So month one was getting used to the program. Then I got used to the program, and then in February, I was forced to go out to eat. Yeah. And now, oh my God, I was scared to go out to eat because I wasn't in control of my own food. And that was another struggle that I had to go through, and I finally overcame that. Then like March came along, and finally I got used to getting out to eat. But now I was like terrified of bread, rice, and potatoes for some reason. Because that's, oh. that's usually what I would cut out before. So come March, I'm terrified of them. I'm like, Brittany, can I eat bread? Can I eat potatoes? Oh my God, can I have some pasta? And that like that was another key struggle. Like they just kept layering onto each other. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other ones is. You know, once I got used to the bread and potatoes and the starches, now I'm wondering, oh, my God, I'm eating this again. Am I going to get fat again? And that's when I, like, slowly wanted to cut back on them. And Brittany said, no, you're fine. Just balance your meals out, and you'll be okay. And then, well, you know, once I got used to that, eating those bad foods. But, Brittany, I learned not to say bad. We say subpar foods. Subpar foods, right. yeah. And that's like the pizzas, the ice creams, the desserts, you know, everything that tastes absolutely amazing. So incorporating that slowly back into my diet. And, yeah. you know, and what portion should I incorporate that in? That was another struggle. Because if you don't, I freak out for anything. Like, oh, anything yeah. freaks me out. I go crazy. I'm on the phone with Brittany. I'm like, oh, my God, Brittany, they're telling me to go out to eat. I'm going to send you the menu. Tell me what to get. Steven, Steven's like category one freak out. Yeah. He just like goes, like, he's like, oh, my, I have to go out to eat. Oh, what am I going to do? Yeah. I, I bought a loaf of bread. <laughs> How do I eat it? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like the dumbest things that if I actually sit back and think about the questions I'm asking, I'm like, oh, my God, there was no need to call Brittany for that. But she was always there to help me out. So thank you. You're welcome. But, um... And then once I started eating those bad foods, you know, I started getting those cravings again, like, oh, my gosh, this is all I want to eat. Yeah. So how to deal with that so I don't fall back into that routine. Yeah. And those are, like, the key struggles, but the point is the, str the struggle is always there. I mean, there's always going to be something new that you have to learn to just overcome. And yeah. now, ironically, my biggest struggle, and we talked about this last week when, um, when we spoke, is 
I'm trying to gain weight now, but like muscle. <laughs> and now I'm struggling to do that. So it's like, oh my gosh, this is never going to end. But, but it keeps things interesting. It's fun. And, and I mean, it's just I'm doing it the right way now. So Yeah. I think the, the most important part and why I wanted you to kind of outline that for people is that I wanted them to realize that this is not just something where I start working with someone and I'm like, listen, you need to eat chicken and egg whites and that's it. You know, like you can, I tell clients they can eat whatever they want. I just had a conversation with a guy this morning who said, he goes, my wife said to me, oh, you can't have that. And I said to him, I said to her, I can eat whatever I want. I'm just choosing not to have it. Yeah. You know, which is exactly kind of what this whole thing is. You know, it's and it's not easy. And it's interesting that it, it's very true, though. Each month, like something new would come, a, a new Stephen freak out would occur. Um, and no, some of, right around the corner. So get ready because I got to yeah. end up for you. Oh yeah, it's it's crazy. And it's what's so interesting is that, like you said, now Stephen Stephen comes to me now and he says, "I think I want to gain some weight." I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Like really, we've worked this hard to get here, and now you want to put on a few pounds? Yes, that's right. Yeah, and so now Stephen's biggest struggle is okay. You're gonna work out, and you want to gain weight. Here, you have to eat a ridiculous amount of food. Look at my and, food log this morning. Like my breakfast, I, I'm still full. Like I'm so glad I didn't have to work so late because I don't yeah. know how bodybuilders do it. More power to them. Holy crap, it's a ton of food. But, yeah, it's it's hilarious. So, but it just goes to show you that you know the struggle never. Ends. You know, this is a this is a long term lifestyle change that people need to stay on top of. You know, and the worst thing is when I have clients who are like, "Oh no, I, I got it. I'm good." Uh, you know, I think I'm gonna be good on my own. And not to say that some people aren't gonna be good on their own, because some people are. But in the back of my mind, I'm always like, well, "I hope they're okay." You know, I hope that all this work they put into it, that they keep up with it. You know, because Stephen and I. We still talk monthly. You know, we still stay in contact. Steven still to this day logs his food, uh, which is crazy, which I love. Good for the whole day. Like, I know exactly what I'm eating today, and I will not, like, yeah. go off of it. Still logs his food. I can still see it. And I still literally get messages that are like, hey, can you look at my food log for today and just double check something for me? I'm like, sure. Let me check it for you. You know, but. Ten months after I started the trial. Ten 11 months after he started, yeah. So it's not, weight loss is not something where it's like, okay, you lost your weight, you know, done. It's something you have to really stay on top of. And I think the good part about the way that I do things and the way that On Point is structured, it gives people those different levels of accountability, you know, because when you and I first started, we, we Skyped twice a week. Twice a week, logged all your food, and I pretty much looked at it probably every other day. Um, and now... We chat on the phone occasionally, email sent back and forth. So that support and connection is still there. But I know now that you are are pretty much good with stuff, you know, and you have a good hold on things. But it's always good to check back to make sure. Yep. Yeah. So so yes, yeah, Stephen's key struggles, but that they were always fun. Um, so I guess my last thing I want to kind of touch on is. You know, we're on top of a new year, yeah. 2016, mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because Steven and I literally started working together January 1st, so it's almost been a year, and if you haven't seen his videos, check out my website, onpoint-nutrition.com. In the Who We Are section, there's some really great videos that Steven took of himself while he was losing weight, um, and they're, they're just hilarious. They're great. Um, but he talks in January about, you know, new me, new year, new me, blah, blah, blah. I was, blah, blah. I was that typical guy doing the selfie video the whole time. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is my year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a thing. Yeah. I got this with the phone. It was I never hilarious. I so much confidence in my life. It was great. It was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. So now with that whole year behind you um, and being a slender 155, uh, now, which, by the way, side note, Stephen's goal weight was 170. 175. He, I 175. never knew 175. He literally told me, "I can't weigh less than 175." I'm a million years. I thought I would ever. You know what you told me? You go, "I'm big boned," and I'm like, "Okay." I'm like, uh, "We'll see about that." <laughs> so, 20 pounds less. There he is. So now at 155, if, what is your goal for 2016? 2016, I have a couple things. I mean, I have this next to me. I know you know what this is. I want to get another one of these. 
Very nice. I was able to run a half marathon, so I still want to run another half, and I want to run a full. Yeah. I do have an injury right now that's preventing me from doing that, but I have a doctor's appointment in two weeks, and hopefully they clear me to start running again. Good. So I definitely, definitely want to run another half, preferably the New York City full marathon. Mm -hmm. And then the, my, my final struggle was that muscle gain. Like, I definitely want to gain a little more muscle. I want to, after a year, I want to see if I can do this for, like, a month without trying to contact you, which I haven't been able to do for the last 10 months. So I have yeah. months to get ready for that, which scares the crap out of me, by the way. <laughs> but, that, I mean, those are my main goals for 2016 yeah. as far as my health goes. I just want to get back into, back into running. I've been doing a lot more lifting. Yeah. Just keep going with the program. I mean, I don't plan on falling off the track anytime soon. So. And uh, the good thing is that if you do fall off the track, which you won't, you know that I'll definitely, um, there's going to be some serious talking to. Gosh, I know. I just keep remembering the first day we met. Brittany scared the crap out of me, by the way. <laughs> first met, I was terrified of Brittany. It was bad. <laughs> and I never told you the story, and this is kind of funny. When we first met, like, I knew you were serious about what you do. Mm -hmm. But we had a coffee shop, a small coffee shop first that they kicked us out of because they closed, and then we went to Panera. Yeah, we didn't even realize that. I was so mad. It was so late, but whatever. But you ordered coffee there, and in my head, my ridiculous extremes that I took to lose weight initially by cutting out all the sugars, like that was the right way. Mm -hmm. But it's funny. I never told you this either. When you oh, ordered your coffee, I saw you like take sugar and put it in. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's putting sugar in her coffee. What is she doing? She can't be serious. I truly didn't know if I should take you serious or not because of <laughs> that, that's how messed up my brain was. I was like, oh, my gosh, she's putting sugar in her coffee. Mm -mm, she must not know what she's doing. Mm -mm, she's not serious. <laughs> and it literally bothered me because I'm like, why is someone going to put a re refined sugar in their coffee if they're trying to help me lose weight? And I was, I was like a little bit upset. And I didn't know <laughs> if I could trust you or not. But now that I think about it, it's like, oh, my God, that was such a stupid thought that I had at the time. What were you thinking? I don't know. It was crazy. But so that, funny. That, that shows how messed up my brain was when it comes to this nutrition thing. Yeah. I'm nowhere near an expert in this at all. I just learned how to eat now. Yeah. That's how messed up I was. You put some sugar in your coffee, I couldn't trust you for like two weeks. Well, now look at us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was bad, but that's what so, I thought. But now, I think, I think 2016 goals are good and uh, definitely achievable. You just have to get that injury under control. You to get it under control. We'll see what they tell me in a couple yeah. of weeks. But... No, I mean, I, and the good part, to sum all this up, because we're almost done, the best part about Stephen is that Stephen has brought his whole family on board. That's right. Yes. Everything's on there. Shout out to my brother, Leo, and my sister, Shirley. One lives in New York. The other one lives in Harrisburg. So, And they're both doing really well. I mean, I don't know what you guys talk about, but I have to see them constantly, and they definitely yeah. did it. My brother just ran a half marathon as well, so more power to him. It's not the easiest thing to do. And yep. Hard, so. He just it. crushed a half marathon. Shirley's kicking butt. She's he hilarious. Texted, he just texted me yesterday. She's like, I'm 134. I'm doing it. I'm like, good. <laughs> but I know it's she's hilarious. I understand where she's coming from because I remember okay. when I finally got under 200, I was on top of the world. So it's a yeah. great movie. So more power to the two of them. My mom so, is yeah, the and my mom on there next, and then we'll see who else goes from there. But trying to bring Oh, yeah. You're. Your mom's on my radar. Yeah. She's, oh, she's, she's on coming. Radar. She's coming sooner or later. Soon. We'll get her. <laughs> so. But I'd like to thank you, Stephen, for coming on today. Again, sharing your wonderful story. Um, if anyone having. has yeah. questions for Stephen, by all means, let us know. We'll send them over to him and be happy to answer them for you. Um, but, again, like I said, check us out, onepoint-nutrition.com. Steven's story is on there with his videos, which are hilarious. I love them. Um, but that's all we got for today. You didn't even know I was doing those videos, did you? No, I had no idea you were doing them, which was the best part. We go to put this new page on the website, and Steven's like, oh, FYI, I got like 10 videos of myself. <laughs> I was like, And really? I watched them, too. I wish I would have kept them all, but yeah, I so. them somehow. But they're on there for everyone's viewing pleasure. So but thank you, Steven. Thanks for having it's, me. It's it. Friday. I'm excited. It's early, but uh, it's still Friday, which is good. Yep. So thank you guys for watching. We'll be back in two weeks. Uh, I haven't decided who I'm going to have on yet. 
I'll figure it out. Um, but either way, good talking to you, Stephen. Yep, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.